The world looks different from above. But some things were never meant to be seen from the sky. We're about to show you disturbing drone footage. The kind that reveals a hidden side of the planet that's best left undisturbed. Ancient symbols etched into the landscape. Inexplicable movements in abandoned places. Isolated figures with chilling intentions. Consider this your final warning. What you see next might change everything you thought you knew about the shadows below. Drones, right off the bat, they're not a new piece of technology, but they're most definitely becoming more widespread. Especially living downtown Toronto, I see drones all the time. And yes, I get mad at them every single time for no reason. I always think it's aliens too for like four seconds and I'm like, nah. Just that guy over there. Surveys suggest that drone technology that's upcoming, that's what the general public fears the most. I mean, fair. That and VR, pretty ominous. Very Black Mirror vibes going on with those two. And part of this, or really a lot of this, is due to the fact that since this technology evolved so quickly, the laws and regulations surrounding drones, well, they haven't exactly had time to catch up. They're cool and all, but drones are quite invasive. Like I said, I see them a lot and I don't wanna. These devices can make others feel like they're being spied on, when really, we're just enjoying the view. In Portsmouth, one man was caught sunbathing on top of a 175 foot tall wind turbine. Yeah, what a location. There we go. The closer to the sun, the better, I guess. I don't know what his mentality is. Drone operator Kevin Miller spotted Joseph Byron catching some, you know, catching a cool breeze on top of a turbine. Now, the man had obviously been asked about his parkour and daver and how he got up there, of course. And apparently, he's been climbing the turbine for over a decade just for some alone time. Yeah, that guy's for sure Batman. Leave people alone. Stop flying drones near them. Number nine. Ghosts. Ah yes, the black-eyed ghouls of Canuck Chase Forest in Stratfordshire, England. You've heard about this one? No? Huh. Listen up. They've been a local legend for hundreds of years now, and now we're finally at a time where drones are responsible for ghost photography. Yep, no escaping now, Casper. We have altitude and speed, buddy. These ghouls, they've been thought to be ghost victims that died from diphtheria outbreak back in the 1800s. So it's not like a scary ghoul Elden Ring type situation. It's just some lost souls, you know, just some sad stuff. They're also said to be victims of Raymond Morris, who took the lives of several people back in the 1960s. So it could be could be outbreak victims and could be worse. Either way, we got it all on drone cam. Check it out. Did you see a ghost wearing a white dress? A little odd to be in the woods like that, no? Definitely without bug spray, you'd probably be a little itchy. Imagine being a ghost and now you have to fly away from a drone. How stressful is that? Just a ghost racing a drone? Next paranormal activity right there. Number eight, Jeepers Creepers. This one I am not a fan of, okay? Some are afraid of heights, so the last one probably scared you. If you're afraid of clowns, well, buckle up. I grew up watching Jeepers Creepers, right? That movie ruined my childhood. Now this clip takes me back to the, to the good old days. Kelly Lopez took his drone for a spin over a cornfield, maybe hoping to see some abandoned tractors, a sunset wouldn't hurt, you know, who knows? When looking back at the footage, Kelly discovered a clown that also discovered Kelly's drone. Yeah, the last thing you'd expect in a cornfield, right? Just a clown. A minute into the footage, the clown notices the drone and then sprints. It takes off so fast. It's almost like he got caught doing something, you know what I mean? Or else why would you run? Doing what though? I don't wanna know. Why is he dressed like a clown too? I need answers, I need all the answers. Or maybe I don't, I don't know, this is too creepy. Let's move on. Number seven, Chernobyl. On April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl power complex erupted. It was just a horrible time. It erupted due to unstable and low power levels. And in turn, reactor four had been shut down a day before due to maintenance. And the next day at 1.23 a.m., radioactive debris compiled the fuel and reactor components just rained down over the building. And toxic fumes were then carried from the wind, and after just four months, 28 workers had died due to radiation exposure. Fast. Now, eventually, they of course had to evacuate over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no go for humans. No, no can do. But drones, on the other hand, Sure, they could swoop in and have a different fate. That area right now is full of nature, but humans are nowhere in sight, so it's pretty beautiful on a grim note. It looks like something from The Last of Us. Reactor 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so I wanna grab a drone soon. Number six, Shark Circle. Cool, all the fears in one video, let's do it. See, this is where I can get behind drone videos. This is where I like drones just this one time. The ocean, right? We have no idea what's in there, in the top or the bottom. So let's fly over and see if there's any treasure or shipwrecks laying around, much safer. Even for rescue purposes, right? If someone's in a cave, maybe they're spelunking and they go missing. 
Well, send in a little drone. Don't send in more people to get stuck. I should be like a guy in the chair who like controls them. That's kind of fun. This next clip here shows surfers from South Africa not realize that they're paddling around a circle of sharks. Yeah, they looked at the footage afterwards and they were like, oh, huh, we were almost lunch. How lovely. Now, I've swam with sharks before. I don't think sharks are the worst ever, obviously. I'm not endorsing that. But, just, but the circling part, the number of them and the circling, nah, I'm good. Number five, massive whirlpool. This next one here will get a certain group of people. Again, me, I'm not a fan of large bodies of water or the ocean or circles of sharks. But murky water, like murky lakes, they're on my big fear list. I don't like those. I don't like putting my foot in a dirty lake. Back in February 2017, while waters were rising at Lake Berryessa in California's Napa Valley, the Glory Hole Spillway, don't you dare, don't you dare laugh at that, the Glory Hole Spillway did what life intended it to do. Did some spilling. There you go. Now, thankfully, a drone guy was nearby. Always handy, those drone guys. So now we get to watch the horrors from above. Take a look. It's also terrifying too when the water is not up that high because now you have this massive pipe just emerging out of the lake, which I mean, that's a bit worse of a fear in my opinion. Number four, inside of a volcano. Awesome, just gives away everything in the title. If you're near an active volcano, don't film it. Just imagine it's the movie Dante Peak and run. Run far away for an hour and 46 minutes. Unless you're an expert. In that case, sure, put on your cool Iron Man space suit and then go sacrifice a couple of drones. Do it in the name of science and then we'll watch and click the like button. A team of National Geographic explorers and scientists, well, they did just that and it's very impressive. They had to sacrifice two drones to get up close to this active Marum crater on the Abram volcano in Vanuatu. Take a look. And also, shield your eyes, it's quite hot. Iron rich, which layers are sulfur rich. Within the caldera as a whole, there's certainly life. Coating the walls as you go down on some of the surfaces down at the bottom, almost certainly there's a high microbial constituency. The volcano has a 7.5 mile wide caldera and its active craters contain lava lakes that flow forever, so. Number three, Corvette sinkhole. I feel like this point is terrifying for a very specific group of people. Only if you're a Corvette guy. If you're watching, then, you know, you've been warned. Otherwise, it's just an epic fail, really. I'm glad nobody got hurt, if anything. In a bizarre turn of events, a sinkhole opened up inside of the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah, inside of the museum, which just boom, and then everything fell in. This was back in 2014. Now, like I said, luckily, nobody was around when the portal to the underworld opened up, but eight Corvettes did get swallowed. Eight Corvettes bit the bullet. The devil wanted those eight Corvettes for a very specific reason. I don't know. Maybe he likes to ride in style. He likes to roof off type five, you know? The Bowling Green Daily News reports that the sinkhole was not small. No, it was 20 feet deep and 40 feet wide in diameter. Now again, this all happened at 5.38 a.m. in the dome area of the museum, so no injuries. But if you're a car guy, this one's bad news. Prepare yourselves, here we go. The eight cars claimed by the sinkhole included the 1993 ZR1 Spider, a 2009 Blue Devil ZR1, ironic, Blue Devil, that's why it wants it, and even the 1993 40th anniversary Corvette. Yikes, all in that hole. Whoops, what are the odds? Now the two ZR1s were on loan from General Motors while the rest of the cars, well, they were just owned by the museum. So just a big L, very expensive L in my opinion. Sinkholes in this part of Kentucky are apparently not uncommon, so Keep your head up, I guess. It sits on what geologists refer to as a karst region, where there are many underground caves and springs. Now, funny enough, engineers determined that the museum remains structurally sound. Still wouldn't catch me in there, no way. Sinkhole or not, I'm never gonna go to a Corvette museum in my life, probably. But if you're a car guy, hey, there you go. Number two, bikes. Yeah, I bet you didn't think I would put bikes on this list, did you? Well, think again, pal. It's one thing to see a city thriving and growing, like with many people, but especially that many people on bikes and bikers doing wacky lane change movements, it's a lot. But to see abandoned bikes just piled up, that's just sad. I'd rather see the opposite. I'd rather see an overflowing city than see a pile of dead bikes. Feels like something straight out of the movie Wall-E. Bike sharing has become a popular form of transportation around the world. Now in China, the supply of bikes is much greater than the 
demand. Add new regulations from local governments to lessen the amounts of bikes on streets, and well, now you end up with abandoned, and most of the time, never even used bikes, all sitting piled up in graveyards all across the country. Now, if you find one, this isn't a treasure chest. Leave it alone. This is a one-way trip to tetanus, so don't, you know, don't climb and explore. Don't be like DW from that one episode of Arthur where she cuts her leg on the can because she's in the garbage thing. Now we remember. That's what drones are for, okay? That's what I'm for. Photographer Wu Goyang captured drone footage of a 15 massive bike graveyards, and they're all equally as haunting. The photographer claims that we're literally throwing away a bike, and that doesn't seem right. I have to agree. Give me like three of them. I had two stolen when I was younger, so, you know, two wouldn't hurt. That's all I'm saying. And finally, number one, Bird drones. We'll finish on a weird one, right? Why not? It's what we're here for. Bird drones is not a new concept by any means, but back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine, where they used these large drones with a low radar cross section and a little camera, all that cool spy stuff, and then they got caught, obviously. It didn't look like a bird at all. They began working on it in 1965, and the first prototype well, it was a bit obvious, wasn't it? It weighed over 100 pounds, it was this massive eagle, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net which broke something every single test flight, so it didn't work. We left it for a while. But now, cut to 2022, yeah, there's for sure a drone pigeon out there watching you somewhere. Olivia just did a couple lists on hidden cameras, so birds and drones, probably. Someone's probably thought about it. People don't even think birds are real. They think those are drones, so. If you're one of those people, I'm sorry, this video definitely did not help you. But if you're not one of those people, hit thumbs up, hit subscribe, and come back. We'd love to see you. Keep thinking that birds are real. That's great. Of this one, it's the 1,000 watt LED light on a drone. It was made by the channel RC Test Flight, who took an insanely bright LED light they made and attached it to a free fly Alter drone. The effect was spectacular. I started watching this one and I thought, oh, it's just gonna be a bright floating light, but it was so much more than that. The incredible shadows and effects of lighting up the night in the woods left many people in the comment section of this video saying it was really a piece of art. At number nine, we have a really scary drone footage, but it's incredible footage, which is why I chose it for this list. What you guys are looking at right now is the aftermath of a war zone. This drone is just flying around and you can see all of these buildings totally destroyed. But the incredible part of that was captured and the scary part was this incoming rocket that just hit into this building, passing super close to this drone. So let me show you the footage I'm talking about and it gets very loud for a second So I'm just warning you guys, you know, maybe take out your headphones for a second Okay, next up at number eight now we have some drone footage from the very famous youtuber Casey Neistat it's titled Human Flying Drone. So even before you start the video, you know it's gonna be a good one. Casey snowboards through a town in Finland, dressed as Santa and holding onto a rope that's attached to a very special and very strong drone. It has to be strong because halfway through the video, the flying part of the title makes total sense as Casey is launched into the air off a snow ramp and he just flies off. I'm not kidding, it's incredible. I didn't even know drones could do that before that video, but now nothing surprises me. Okay, I, I watched that video and it is just so epic. I've tried that with my drone, but for some reason it doesn't pick me up. Okay, so moving into number seven, we have the Northern Lights. What you guys are looking at right now is a drone footage shot in 4K in Iceland. It's just amazing to be able to see the lights like this. I know I was in Iceland and this is something I was able to see, the Northern Lights, and it's one of the biggest highlights from my travels so far. When you actually see the northern lights it's just an incredible feeling from there let's move on from there to fireworks that was captured on a drone and this comes into this list at number six using a drone to capture fireworks was just a whole new experience watch Okay, a lot of fireworks came pretty close to the drone and that would totally suck if the fireworks like one of them just like hits the drone and your drone is done. Especially if you're on vacation. Now you can't take amazing footage of other things that you're doing or the scenery around you. But it seemed like this person really knew what they were doing because this footage was just absolutely stunning. All right guys, halfway through, next up at number five, we are going to Hawaii. I wish that sentence was really true, but the next best thing you can do is this 4K definition footage of Hawaii uploaded by YouTuber Sawyer Hartman. Now it starts off quite slow and it shows us nice scenes that we all associate with Hawaii, our own sunsets and sandy beaches. But as the video goes on, it starts to show a whole lot more. Does 
thirsty red hills, tropical forests, green rolling hills, clouds engulfing the trees. It's honestly incredible. It looks like a movie. And I won't lie to you guys, the music for me is also a big part of what makes this such a great video. But hey, it's all part of the package. I highly recommend you check this one out. Moving on to number four now, we have West Canada by Drone. Now I've been out to British Columbia, I travelled around it for a month and I was blown away by the beauty of this part of the world. I thought nothing could come close to seeing it actually in person on the ground, but it turns out that seeing it through 4K drone footage comes pretty close. It might even be better. The drone takes us soaring over the endless uninhabited mountains. It was uploaded by a YouTuber called Man and Drone. And that's exactly what this video is. Just one man, his drone, and a landscape that looks like CGI. It really makes you want to go back with a drone next time. At number three, we have wildlife. This person decided to make some 4K drone footage of wildlife in Africa, and I think it turned out amazingly. In this footage, you can see elephants in their natural habitat. In this footage, we're about to show you the drone was able to keep up with giraffes running. And then you can see a lion in the wild. It's just so amazing what you can capture these days. Up at number two, we have one that would be my number one if this was just my list. Sorry, Landon. It's called Drone and Tigers by a guy called David Durr. Rivage. He captures some of the most mind-blowing footage of Bengal tigers I have ever seen. Using a drone allowed him to get incredibly close to these animals, and I also love the interaction with them in the video. The tigers are quite curious. They leap through the snow to follow the actual drone. It's way better than just pictures. You get to see them in action and not through a camera lens that's like half a mile away either. If you love animals, especially big cats, you will honestly struggle to find a better drone video than this. And lastly, the one that beats Danny's favorite one is my favorite one but you guys tell us which one you guys like better so this next video was taken by a drone that was just spectacular and this is a place where a lot of people will never be able to travel to so let me show you guys this footage it's footage take I think one day I would love to visit a volcano you know me Danny Rebecca we can go you know backpacking and I don't know, would you go, Would you want to go to a volcano? Uh, if I can stand a safe distance away. Every clip I see, there's always lava spurting out of them. Yeah, well, we were, it won't be that close, but it's just it seems unbelievable, it really does. We have, of course, McDonald's. Imagine ordering a Big Mac right now in the comfort of your own home. Well, actually, just recently, you can now Uber Eats McDonald's, but it's not the same as it like as a burger like coming flying into you if you use a drone. Uber Eats, I find, has been a slow process. It takes so much time for the food to get to me but I don't know if you guys experience the same thing sometimes it's like you're looking at your app and there's like a someone on a bike that's gonna deliver it to you and you're like oh my god McDonald's is like 30 kilometers this is why McDonald's should use drones you place your order and then boom a drone will get it to you within two minutes two Big Macs for me please number nine we have pizza companies like Pizza Pizza Domino's I don't care all pizza companies should have it well actually it was just announced that Domino's will start using drones in New Zealand hopefully this test is successful and because maybe other places would use it as well New New Zealand is on top of their game. They're like the first ones to do this. They're the innovators. There will be a time where I don't even want pizza, but just watching pizza or like just food flying towards you is gonna make me want to order it. This will like up the sales for pizza companies for sure. All right, number eight, we have eBay. eBay has become the biggest platform to buy products from. eBay has been around for almost 22 years now, which actually when you think about it, it's actually quite young. But this is a multi-billion dollar business that operates in about 30 or more countries. It's Seems like you can buy anything from eBay these days. You can probably even buy people. Is there like a black market eBay? There probably is. Well, what if you can buy something and then it drones to you? If you want to order a dog from eBay, boom. Crap. No, no. Okay, maybe eBay wouldn't want a flying dog in the air because there's just too much that could actually go wrong. So let's move on. Number seven, what if taxis use drones or even Uber? Right now, Uber actually has self-driving cars on the road. These cars, it's just a test pilot thing that's going on. There's still people behind the wheel, but it's actually driving people from point A to point B. It's self-driving these people. This is the future, people. The future is here. Just imagine getting picked up with one of these things. Of course it would be a two-seater. 
Okay, moving into number six, we have new stations. They should be using drones. Why send a guy up in an expensive helicopter for weather reports when all you have to do is to sit in your boxers with some Cocoa Puffs while you're flying a drone telling people about the weather? This drone can capture 360 of the traffic and it will cost way less than using fuel for a helicopter and always having to rent one or to buy one. I'm not sure if these radio stations actually like if they own it. I actually went onto eBay because I was a little bit curious to see if they sell helicopters on there and of course I found one there's this helicopter gearbox for $750,000 I mean I'm not sure what the heck it is all I know is it's not the full helicopter so I kept on digging to see how much they would cost well I found another helicopter and you can actually buy one for $165,000 it seems uh, affordable for, for millionaires and for big companies that do weather reports I read the description and it says that there's missing parts though which is why it's pretty cheap and the shipping's only $100.32 I don't know something seems a little bit fishy if that costs 100 bucks to ship and uh, I buy things online all the time and it just costs like almost the same amounts and I'm I don't know I'm getting products way lighter than a helicopter I'm just saying number five Facebook should be using drones if they're not already Google and Amazon are large companies already using them for businesses Mark Zuckerberg the CEO of Facebook has been talking about creating an infrastructure to help connect the world to the internet. Mark Zuckerberg wants Africa to have free internet, so why not fly a big solar drone over Africa that has Wi-Fi capability on it? The drone being solar would make it never die. And if you fly it high enough, gravity takes its toll, which means you don't need much energy to keep the drone up there in the air. And then boom, you can grant internet access to a whole country that needs to catch up with the rest of the world. The internet has become a very powerful and much needed place for information. Okay, number four, farmers. They should be using drones. This would make Make their lives so much easier. How would this make their lives easier? Well, farmers always have to monitor their crops and also monitor to see if animals are getting into their crops. Well, why not again stay home, eat some Cocoa Puffs, and survey the land using drone cameras installed on it? Why not create a drone with sensors on it? Make the drone start up whenever there's movement around. If there's like an animal, boom, the drone just like attacks them. And then it just destroys the animal. Oh, okay, maybe, okay, we won't go that far. This is like a, a drone scarecrow 2.0 or something. Thing going on here very useful and also I just want to make farmers lives so much easier because they work so damn hard moving on to number three we have us I think residents of houses should be using drones as surveillance features security companies should be using drones as a safety thing in homes so just like farmers imagine if we program the drone to turn on with motion so when someone breaks into your house the drone turns on and alerts the police and then they start flying over the person and starts filming everything that happened this drone would then follow the person who's trying to like break into your house or commit a crime and then the drone footage is is accessible through like the police cars the cruisers so they're able to look at the monitor and just follow the suspect you're not gonna be able to outrun technology so at that point there would just be no point in breaking into homes because everyone will have drones and you will be caught 100% of the time I mean it's gonna be captured all right number two police officers they should be using drones if they're not already this is because drones are actually way easier to find suspects if if they're on the run. Drones are very fast and they get to places where vehicles cannot. And also they can lock onto targets and follow it around. So wherever the suspect goes, the drones will be able to follow them until they're arrested. Also, what about for search and rescue? The drone is able to cover a whole lot more area than, you know, police officers running on feet or driving their vehicles. This also saves the cost of using helicopters for a rescue mission. Imagine building like a big drone and you can like lift people up out of like bad situations. Finally, number one, we have real estate. We all know how effective pictures online can be and you know whether or not deciding if you want to buy the property. I know for me when I'm house hunting I look at pictures online before I want to see them in real life and if they suck I just pass on them. It could be like the dream home but you just took a picture of a wall or you take in 10 pictures of one bathroom and and claim you have like 10 bathrooms in the house. Well I want to see it but imagine if real estate agents are using drones to take proper pictures of the property. If I could see how big the land is it it might make me want to buy the property. I want to see different angles. I want to see different views. Also, the type of videos you can actually create from drones is just so unreal. It's gonna sell the house. Using a drone, you can also film a neighborhood because this is important to a lot of people. You can say like, this is where the house is, and then you just walk over here, and it's like a video footage. There's the school, the shops, the stores, everything you could have ever wanted. And number 10, with startling a heap of sheep. The US National Park Service placed a ban on drones in every National Park after
after a man startled a herd of endangered bighorn sheep, the sheep were frightened and they were seen scattering in all different directions. Even some lambs were separated from their mothers in the chaos. The penalty for using a drone in a national park can be up to six months imprisonment or a $5,000 fine. Coming up on this list, at number nine is flying a drone into a hot spring. A Dutch tourist flew their drone into the Yellowstone National Park's Grand Prismatic Spring, which is the nation's largest hot springs at 121 feet deep. The National Park Service said that they are going to have to leave the drone in the hot spring because they fear that the recovery attempt may result in further damage to the hot spring and they fine the tourists $3,000. Number 8 brings us to knocking people over. <laughs> I mean, is this real life right now? Come on. A drone hit an athlete who was competing in a triathlon in Western Australia. The drone was hovering above the competitors. When an operator suddenly lost control, the drone fell 10 meters, hitting an athlete. The woman sustained head injuries and was treated by local paramedics before being taken to the hospital in a stable condition, where she had to get three stitches for her injury. And the worst part, she lost the race, of course. She couldn't finish. Now, in at number seven, using them to fly yourself off the ground. Take a look at this video right here. Okay, I have to admit, this looks pretty cool, but also very, very dangerous. I'd be very scared of all those propellers so close to my face and like if I lost control. What if the controls malfunctioned and he plummeted to the ground, or was he able to land himself properly? I don't think I would ever attempt this, but let me know, are you guys like, are you guys living on the edge? Would you do this? Moving up this list, and at number six is the mistletoe drone. This drone was supposed to be like a romantic jester that would get customers at TGI Fridays to kiss on camera. Sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't know. Well, this plan did go horribly wrong because of course it made it onto this list, so we already knew that, but one of the drones smashed into a photographer's face, slicing off the tip of her nose and cutting open her lip. The drone was so entangled in her hair and she also had the fear that she might lose an eye. Number five takes us to ruining a wedding day. So this might be the end of a videographer's career. Take a look at this. Is this real life right now? So the ceremony is done and the bride and groom are trying to capture some romantic pictures for their wedding album and then this angry drone punches them psh, just right in the face. Like what the heck was that? This is so brutal because the drone probably did some damage to their face and they still have other pictures to take. This is your wedding day. These are pictures you're gonna remember for the rest of your life and now you have like a, a, a propeller blade right across your face. That bride probably went crazy on the videographer and it's safe to say I think they won't be giving him a positive reference for you know his future clients. Flying the drone above the White House makes its way into this list at number four for some reason. Ugh. Back in 2015, Secret Service detained a man who was trying to fly a drone over the White House fence. Even the park on the north side of the White House was placed on lockdown while the incident was being investigated. Could you guys imagine seeing this? Like the White House, it appeared that it's under attack. So at the time of this incident, President Barack Obama, who was the president of the time, he wasn't in the White House, so his safety was not in jeopardy. This man who was flying the drone luckily did not face any criminal charges. He was so damn lucky, but I bet this was pretty embarrassing. Drone roadkill comes in to number three. Bart Jansen decided to take his deceased cat and turn it into a drone back in 2012 when the cat was struck by a car. It was a big story, it was all over the news. If this isn't serial killer behavior, I don't know what is. He teamed up with an engineer and they only use roadkill for the strange drones. Take a look at this creepy drone. Cat Orville got killed by a car. I decided to turn it into a drone. I don't know about you guys, but this is extremely disturbing and we might have a serial killer on our hands because you know how they all start. They kill animals and I know this person didn't kill an animal, but they're flying a dead animal. Number two takes us to smuggling drugs into Mexico. I mean, God damn, what is going on? Two men pleaded guilty to smuggling drugs into Mexico involving a drone. 28 pounds of heroin were smuggled across the US border and two men were caught on the border patrol cameras retrieving the drugs. Small drones were able to fly for about an hour and travel as far as five miles. Drug cartels in Mexico have been relying more on drones to transport the drugs. Drones are the ideal 
Tokyo Drug Mule because they allow drug cartels to transport shipments more quickly with less risks of being caught. And finally, coming in to number one is flying a drone over Heathrow International Airport. A passenger plane had a very near miss with the drone as it was approaching Heathrow Airport in London. The plane was flying at an altitude of 4,900 feet when it narrowly avoided colliding with the drone. This incident was deemed to be in the most serious category of risk and the drone operator had not been traced. And if they have, I wonder what they would have done to him. But let me know, what do you guys think should have happened to this guy for flying a drone in a freaking airport? You're putting a lot of people's lives at risk. The sarcophagus. Basically, this is a massive steel and concrete structure that covers the Chernobyl power plant. It was designed to help contain the radiation. The construction of the structure lasted for 206 days, and those working on it had to work in shifts of no more than 7 minutes. Any more time spent near the reactors would have killed them. But still, they did sacrifice their lives building this because thousands of workers still died from exposure to the radiation. Those that survived got severely ill, and the majority of them developed cancer. Nowadays, the sarcophagus is still there, but it's beginning to crumble. In 2019, they were in the process of dismantling it because it was going to collapse. So a new one is currently being installed. That's probably the scariest thing in Chernobyl because of how deadly the building it's containing is. Coming in at number 9 we have the gas masks and if you guys are liking this video or want to see part 3 then smash that like button. Chernobyl already looks like the place where an apocalypse occurred. Buildings are completely abandoned, run down and overgrown with nature. What doesn't help is the piles upon piles of gas masks scattered all throughout Chernobyl. This really adds to the eeriness of this place and again makes it look like a place where a zombie or alien takeover occurred. In fact there is one room inside a school which is just completely filled with child sized gas masks. It's very creepy, but also sad. Like imagine how frightened the young children were when this happened. The gas masks found there are just a sad reminder of the horrors that took place there when the reactor exploded. Moving on to number 8 we have the rotting toys. Littered all throughout the city are toys or personal belongings people had to leave behind. The saddest thing to see are pictures of children's toys left behind. Like I just think that was probably someone's favorite little dolly. Go anywhere there and you'll find items scattered everywhere, now broken and covered in filth. Like imagine, you're rushed out of your home and have to leave behind all your personal belongings. That must have been so hard, I can't imagine how everyone must have felt. It's really depressing to think about. Moving on at number 7 we have the examination chair. So uh, this one is pretty strange, but somehow a gynecologist examination chair ended up in the middle of the woods outside of a hospital. Not only is that super weird, but it's also super creepy. It's all rusted and beat up and looks like an old torture device. Not only that, but that means someone had to go inside the abandoned hospital, find that chair and then carry it all the way back down and into the woods. I got a lot of questions. Why would someone do this? And how long did it take them to do this? And again, why would someone do this? Either way, it makes for a very spooky encounter. Moving on at number 6 we have the abandoned cooling tower. A partially constructed cooling tower can be found at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. They were built to evaporate the cooling water from the two new reactors. Sadly, they were never completed. Now, these things are massive. The diameter was over 120 meters and it stands at 150 meters tall. Obviously, after the accident, there was no need to continue on with the construction of this, so the government just left the towers there along with everything else. Eventually, over time, nature will have its way with it and it will start to erode and crumble. It's just crazy seeing all these abandoned infrastructures. Imagine how life would have been if that explosion never happened. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the toxic river. There's a river that's just filled with radioactive water right near the reactor. The scariest part is despite how toxic the water is, a bunch of aquatic life live there. In particular, giant catfish. Yes, giant catfish. A video from 2016 shows a massive catfish swimming in the water. People originally were like, oh my god, what the heck is that? It must be some sort of mutated animal. Later, it was just found out to be a giant catfish. But still, what the heck? 
and it's the fact that they have adapted to be able to survive in that highly toxic water. Like that just baffles me. Not only that, but they can thrive there because the water has no higher predators. Obviously though, you're not allowed to go fishing there. Okay, I feel like that's a given, but I also feel like people would still try it, so I'm just gonna say it. Don't go fishing there. In our fourth spot, we have the jarfish. Speaking of fish, we're gonna go with this. So back in 2016, photographer and journalist Miriam Wazer took a trip to explore the ruins of Chernobyl. While inside an abandoned building, she came across something very creepy and odd. She found a bunch of fish and other specimen in jars. Why someone was collecting fish, it just baffles many. And they weren't even like proper beakers or science mason jars. No, no, it looked like someone emptied out their jar of pickles and then used it to store the specimen. I think it's best if those remain untouched. Like, can you imagine how stinky they would be if they were open nowadays? They would reek. Old stinky fish is not something I would ever want to handle. Now the other specimen beside the fish are unknown. No one knows what the heck they are. But if you know, let me know in the comments below. Coming in at number three, we have the abandoned hospitals. The hospitals at Chernobyl are quite eerie. They're just filled with rusted, empty hospital beds, littered syringes, and more. The walls and floors are cracking, and there's dirt and questionable red marks on the floor. I think the saddest thing, though, is that these hospitals are often trashed with medical supplies just tossed everywhere. The days after the explosion happened, people were frantically rushing to hospitals. Hospital staff were overwhelmed by the amount of people there. This moment is still preserved in the hospitals to this day. It's pretty dark once you think about it. And at number two today, we have the Sad Alley. The Sad Alley, or the Alley of Memory, is an alley in the Ukraine created in memory of the villages and residents who had to flee from their homes during the disaster. Basically, it's a walkway with signs lining the sides. These signs are names of cities and villages that had to evacuate and leave everything behind. It's a way to ensure we just never forget the impact that this disaster had. It's really sad. And in our number one spot today, we have the radioactive spiders. Yes, you heard me correctly. Imagine if Peter Parker got bit by one of these bad guys. He'd be like a weirdly mutated Spider-Man or something like that. But anyways, the spiders in the exclusion zone are radioactive. So you definitely don't want to be bit by one. Oh wait, it gets worse. They also make radioactive webs. Yeah, you heard me, that's a thing. So you don't have to just worry about these spiders, but you have to worry about walking through their deadly webs. Like, what the heck? No thank you, nah, -uh. I'm not a fan of spiders, but imagine radioactive ones. That sounds like it belongs in a horror movie. Radioactive, radioactive. The cannibalism. A lot of people are under the impression that the Centralese people on this island are cannibals. Because of their hostility and unadvanced lifestyle, people think they are completely wild. On a number of occasions, trespassers have been killed by this tribe. Their bodies put on display before being buried. Never eaten. It's also believed that this theory was born after learning about the practices of a neighboring tribe. That tribe would cut up and burn the flesh of the deceased tribe members. This was said to prevent them from being consumed by evil spirits. But in 2006, a group of researchers studied the island and found no evidence that they practiced this deed. So it seems like this creepy theory is inaccurate. Moving on to number nine, we have the secret facility. Okay, this next theory is more on the wild side. It was posted by Reddit user SlyFry. According to them, they have a theory that North Sentinel Island is home to a top secret research facility, and the people on the island are protecting it. I mean, the Sentinelese are very violent, and they will kill anyone that comes close to their island. Maybe it's because they have to guard this secret facility with their life. I mean, it would be a good place for a secret facility, just because of how secret and protected the island is. And it would be the last place people would think a secret facility would be. That's just one crazy theory. It also could explain why the Indian government doesn't allow sharing of images taken of the Sentinelese or of the island. Moving on, at number eight, we have the fake shipwreck. In August of 1981, a Hong Kong freighter known as the Primrose ended up getting in a shipwreck a couple of meters away from the North Sentinel Island. As soon as this happened, they were greeted by 50 locals with spears and arrows. They began launching attacks at the boat. The captain immediately made a desperate call for help, asking for weapons to be airdropped so they could defend themselves. 
Thankfully, the crew members were rescued by a helicopter and left uninjured. But the remains of the wrecked ship still remain near the island. Theory goes that this never even happened? A shipwreck never occurred and the ship was just placed there as a ploy to make the story more credible. Now, why would they make this up? Well, to make the story of this dangerous island more credible. Again, to prevent outsiders from trespassing on the island. Either to keep the Centralese safe or to keep their top secret facility safe. In our seventh spot, we have the tsunami. In 2004, a big tsunami struck the North Sentinel Island. When things settled, a bunch of Indian Coast Guard helicopters flew over the island to see if they needed any help. They expected the worst outcome. But surprisingly, everything was okay. They managed to survive this deadly tsunami. The question is, how? Well, that's when this theory comes in. Some believe that the Sentinelese were protected by amulets of ancestral bones. They sensed the storm was coming and went out and scattered pig and turtle skulls around their island. And in the end, that is what protected them from this deadly storm. Coming in at number six, we have The Encounter. In 1991, a group of Indian anthropologists led by Mr. Pandit made peaceful contact with the Sentinelese. It started off with them bringing gifts for them, like coconuts, to show them they mean no harm. In fact, there's some photos and videos of this team's interaction with the tribe, and it's astonishing. The Centralese didn't seem afraid at all. So what happened? What changed their ways? I mean, in 1996, the Indian government banned any researchers from visiting the island. But what caused them to become more hostile towards outsiders again? Theory goes that between 1991 and 1996, something very bad happened. Like an encounter gone wrong. The government is scared of bringing outsider diseases to the island. Maybe that's exactly what happened, which led to the ban in 1996. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with John Allen Chow. In November of 2018, John Allen Chow believed with the power of God, he would be able to to convert the Centralese to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on earth. He felt it was his mission to help them. So he went there from America and tried to make contact with them. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone. And that was the last time anyone had seen him. They just assumed he had been taken captive by the locals and was killed. But his body was never recovered. In fact, they tried to recover his body a number of times, but have never been successful. Theory goes though that John is actually still alive and is living there with them in peace. According to anthropologist T.N. Pandit, who has encountered the group on a number of occasions, he has described them as being largely peace loving. But when they see someone new invading their territory, they get violent. But if Pandit was able to gain their trust and get close to them, maybe John actually was able to do the same. Who knows? According to a fisherman, he saw the tribe members dragging a dead body by a rope, but we don't know if that really was John's. Moving on, at number four, we have the government experimentation. Theory goes that the government is actually holding the Sentinelese captive there. This is all against their will. Why are they doing this? Well, theory goes that they are running a number of experiments on them, like how long they are able to sustain their hunter-gatherer lifestyle, or how long they can go living and repopulating with a small amount of people. Because in the end, there's not going to be a lot of genetic variety there. There have already been concerns about inbreeding going on. Maybe this is all done at the hands of the Indian government. In our third spot, we have the Malaysian Flight 370. On March 8th of 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared without a trace. To this day, no one knows what happened to this flight and the 227 passengers and 12 crew members on board. But NVJDS on Reddit has a theory on the flight's disappearance. He thinks that the missing flight was purposely crashed onto North Sentinel Island. Since the island keeps everyone away, no one would go looking there for a plane and they wouldn't be able to even if they tried. As for why the plane was crashed there, I have no idea. But this kind of makes sense. Researchers that have tried to make contact with the island said the Sentinelese had new weapons made of metal. How could they get their hands on metal? Well, if a plane crashed there, they would have access to a lot of metal scraps. 
which was then used to make better spears and arrows. And in our second spot, we have the brainwashing. Okay, this is another pretty extreme and messed up theory, but as you know from Lindsay's earlier point, John Allen Chow went to North Sentinel Island to try and help the Sentinelese, a move that many think was dumb and pointless. But John was determined to bring Christianity to them. Theory goes that John was actually brainwashed and sent there on a mission on behalf of other missionaries. In 2017, during a boot camp missionary training, that's when he first got the idea to preach to the Sentinelese. Theory goes that something went down to that training, maybe the missionaries were all brainwashed with different missions, John's being to make connection to the tribe. And in our number one spot, we have Maurice Vidal Portman. This theory was shared on Twitter by the user Respectable Lawyer. They might have discovered why the Sentinelese people are so violent towards outsiders. Let's take a look at a man named Maurice Vidal Portman. Back in the day, Maurice was assigned to look over the Andaman Islands and the Andamanese, but he ended up kidnapping some locals and took disturbing photos of them. He also would treat them like objects and would measure every inch of them. Every inch. He had an unhealthy obsession with them. He did this up until 1880 when he started focusing on North Sentinel Island. He abducted an elderly couple there who soon passed away from outside diseases. So it's thought that he did the same thing to the Sentinelese people. And this is what caused them to become so defensive to outsiders. Because in the past, this creepy man abducted members of their tribe and ran tests on them. In the end, they are scared this will happen again. If you enjoyed this video about creepy drone footage, then you have to check out this video about dash cam footage. This footage is the stuff of nightmares. Make sure to click the video now to find out more.